The final item of business today is the Members' Business Debate on Motion No. 14481 in the name of Liz Smith on Perth bid to become the UK City of Culture 2021. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would be grateful if those members who wish to speak in the debate could press the request to speak buttons now. I call on Liz Smith to open the debate. Seven minutes, please, Ms Smith. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I am uh, very grateful to bring this uh, motion to Parliament, and can I immediately put on uh, record my thanks to all the members across the Chamber uh, who have given it uh, their support. The UK uh, City of Culture competition, which is run by the UK Department for Culture, Media and Sport, is, I think we all agree, a great opportunity for any UK city to both celebrate and promote its unique culture. Now, judging what has been achieved uh, to date in cities such as Derry, Londonderry, which was 2013, uh, which I think is absolutely fantastic, may I say, and what is planned for the future with Hull in 2017, I think the potential benefits are so significant and so it was very welcome uh, news that Perth and Kinross Council announced that it was putting together its bid for uh, 2021. Perth is, of course, at the very heart of Scotland's story. Once uh, just beyond the very northern edge of the Roman Empire, it is where ancient Scotland and the Kingdom of Alba were forged, and it was, of course, once the capital and the crowning place of Scottish kings. Schoon Palace, immortalised in Macbeth, remains a lasting symbol of Perth's historic and royal connections and was the most fitting venue when Her Majesty the Queen bestowed city status on Perth just a few years ago in 2012. In economic terms, intimately tied with the River Tay, Perth has always been an important focus for employment, for investment and for trade. Uh, but now its very rich cultural heritage is becoming just as important. The Fair City is the place which inspired Walter Scott to write about the Fair Maid of Perth and which inspired Georges Bizet's opera of exactly the same name. So Perth has plenty of reason throughout history to celebrate its culture, but it is ambitious to do so much more, to build on the highly successful Perth Festival of the Arts, which was founded in 1972, and the magnificent art collections in the museums and galleries, including the Ferguson Gallery, which celebrates the life and work of the celebrated Scottish colourist, John Duncan Ferguson, whose wife, of course, Margaret Morris, was the pioneer of modern dance. The city was also home to glass production, including Vassart and Monart, which during the heyday of the 1930s was Scotland's answer to the French art glass movement, celebrated for its vivid spiralling colours in the very fashionable emporia of London in New York. So it has very much put Perth and Scotland on the world's arts map. Even today, Perth Museum and the Art Gallery are home to one of, Scotland, of, one of Europe's most important uh, collections of glass, especially when it comes to the highly valued uh, Monarch and Vassart paperweights. It is, of course, Perth home to two theatres, Perth Theatre and the Concert Hall, which, apart from attracting Scotland's political parties for their conference seasons, uh, has a remarkable record for hosting some of the finest international artistes in the world of music and drama. Perth Theatre, which was constructed in 1900, is one of Scotland's oldest and most historic repertory theatre and we are all very much looking forward to the state of the art 16 million redevelopment, which by 2017 will build a new complex to house a studio art space, a youth theatre, a construction workshop, and a series of front of house performance areas, in addition to the main focus of the conservation and restoration of the historic Edwardian Auditorium. This is all part of the effort undertaken by Perth and Kinross Council over the last two years to set out a long term approach to develop the city's unique cultural assets and strengths and to bring forward an investment program focused on Perth becoming a cultural hub for the whole central part of Scotland. Alongside the Perth Theatre redevelopment, there is also the Mill Street regeneration, new proposals to further develop the Perth Museum and the Art Gallery, and exciting plans to develop a city cultural quarter. In short, it is a plan to ensure that Perth City becomes the most desirable place in Scotland in which to live, work, invest, and enjoy a rich diversity of cultural experience, as well as a plan that will improve connectivity, develop the knowledge economy, and strengthen the opportunities for business and tourism. Being named UK City of Culture also brings the opportunity for winning, the winning city to host UK cultural events, such as the Turner Prize, which was awarded uh, in Scotland for the first time in Glasgow's Tramway Arts Centre, the Man Booker Prize, and the Stirling Prize. If successful, 
The whole of Perthshire and Kinrosshire can benefit from thousands of additional visitors and it could lead to an estimated £60 million boost for the local economy. Importantly, the bid also has the potential to act as a catalyst for key regeneration projects and it's hoped that there could be long-term help for some of the neglected areas such as Bridge End and the long-term future for St Paul's Church. As mentioned earlier, it is only three years since Perth had its city status restored to mark Her Majesty's Queen's Diamond Jubilee in 2012. So Perth's bid for the City of Culture represents a really exciting opportunity to put Perth and Perthshire and Kinrosshire firmly on the cultural map of the United Kingdom, as well as raising the international profile of Perth. Now, I know that to some extent the UK City of Culture competition 2021 is set to pit two of Scotland's great cities beginning with P in competition with each other. And I'm pleased to see that the member for Paisley is uh, sitting in the chamber because I know that that bidding process will be very competitive and intense. Um, but uh, nonetheless, I think that that competition uh, will be good for all the cities uh, that do compete because I think it makes them focus uh, on what uh, the future can deliver in terms of diverse and vibrant arts culture. Perth is, as you know, a relatively small city with a population standing at around 47,000. However, I believe that that's not mo the most important thing. I think the deciding factor ought to be on what it can offer from a, a very important uh, cultural diversity. So, Deputy Presiding Officer, the former Cultural Secretary, Brian Bradshaw, said something very interesting when he announced the launch of the UK City of Culture initiative. He said that culture is something that we are incredibly good at in the UK, but excellence and innovation in the arts does not begin and end inside the M25. And I believe that we have been too London-centric for too long in our cultural life. And I entirely agree with that comment. The quality of the cultural organisations based in the area is exceptional, whether it's Horsecross Arts, the Pitlochry Festival Theatre, the Perth Festival of the Arts, and many more. Culture is central to the future aspirations of the city, both in terms of the economic benefits that that can deliver and what culture can do to have that wider transform transformative power to improve the quality of life and build a sense of identity and civic pride across the communities. So I very much look forward to working with colleagues across the chamber and I hope that Perth will be well considered in the competition. Many thanks. I now call it uh, Turn to the open debate speech to four minutes, please, and I now call Claire Baker to be followed by Willie Rennie. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I would like to congratulate Liz Smith on securing today's debate on Perth's bid to be a City of Culture 2021. Uh, Liz Smith has expertly detailed the strengths of a Perth bid, and it is fantastic to see this level of ambition from a city within my own region. Uh, Perth is a beautifully located city which is investing in its arts infrastructure. We increasingly recognise the importance of the cultural and social value of arts festivals across Scotland. Um, our arts and our culture are hugely important for tourism, with visitors increasingly looking for an experience when they visit and an engagement with the co country's cultural programme. Um, the Perth Festival of the Arts was founded in 1972 and is now in its 45th year. It is one of the oldest continuous arts festivals in Scotland and has grown in strength in recent years with a much more diverse programme. Um, the investment in the Perth theatre development and the Mill Street regeneration demonstrates a commitment to cultural investment by the city, building an identity for the arts and a commitment to a home for Scotland's talent. The redevelopment of the Perth Museum and Art Gallery also gives improved opportunities to showcase the collection in the best possible way and builds on Perth's reputation as a cultural city. Um, of course, Perth's cultural programme serves many more people than those in Perth alone, and it does act as a hub for the surrounding area. So a successful bid for Perth would bring wider benefits to the Perthshire economy. This is a significant undertaking for Perth and Kinross Council, and I wish them well in developing their bid proposal. And as a member for Mid Scotland and Fife, I would be delighted to see them win the award and offer my support for their bid. Um, the City of Culture programme was launched in July 2009 by the Labour UK Government. It built on the success of Liverpool as the European City of Culture in 2008. It demonstrated how a cultural award and focused investment can bring cultural, economic and social benefits. Culture can be really transformative for an area and can particularly bring rewards for areas which have been hit by economic and industrial decline. In the first year, 14 cities applied and Derry, Londonderry, became the first city of culture in 2013. 
The title is held for a year with the award made every four years. The most recent winner was Hull, although Dundee did get considered in the final four. It is interesting to consider what the TV producer Phil Redmond, who was then the chair of the Culture Panel, said. He said Hull was the unanimous choice because it put forward the most compelling case based on its theme as a city coming out of the shadows. Um, I think this demonstrates an important aspect of the competition. It does support regeneration of a city and it looks for transformational change in awarding the title. Um, there are other Scottish bids. Um, I recently visited Paisley at the invitation of Neil Bibby, MSP, and met with Mark McMillan, the council leader, to talk about Paisley's bid and their aim to combine the heritage of Paisley with a cultural vision for the future. There may be other bids from Scottish cities still to come. And the Cabinet Secretary will know that the last time the award was bid for, both Dundee and Aberdeen entered the competition. Although Dundee was considered in the final four, there is a debate about whether or not Scotland should support one bid which could gather support from the Scottish Government. It's obviously not a government bid, the competition is for the city authorities, but support from the government might give more weight to a, lead, uh, to a bid and lead to a successful Scottish bid. Uh, President Officer, I would like to close by saying I wish Perth well in its campaign. It has a significant base to build from. It has shown commitment to investing in its cultural capital and it would be fantastic to see it being awarded this status. Many thanks. I now call Willie Rennie to be followed by George Adam. Uh, thank you, Deputy President Officer. And I too congratulate Liz Smith on securing this debate today. I think this is the first members debate that I've ever taken part in. I think it's such an important issue that I've decided to to um, speak in this important debate. Um, this, uh, for this city of culture status in 2021, I think is well fitting to the city of Perth. Uh, it's the city of my birth, uh, the city of my youngest son's birth. It's the city where my oldest son attends college and he does a HND in technical theatre, which I think brings me neatly to the real benefits, I think, of the Perth bid. It's got such a thriving cultural community within the city, that it would really live up to the aspirations of the city of culture uh, status. I think what we've clearly seen is we've got some fantastic facilities, as Liz Smith has set out with the concert hall, the museum and the art gallery, the Perth Theatre that's going through quite a significant period of investment with £16 million, which shows again the commitment of Perth and Kinross Council to the development of arts within the area and the wider area too and the Ferguson Gallery, which Liz Smith has alluded to as well. Um, but I think it's the kind of the deep heritage within the city um, that I think would make it a spectacular um, winning nominee for, for the city of culture status. We've heard about the great history, the fact that Scotland, the modern Scotland, was forged um, within uh, Perth, that it was the ancient capital of Scotland, that it's often many kings were crowned alongside uh, the great city of Dunfermline, they competed for that status. But also the Renaissance playing a very important part in the Renaissance um, with Ferguson, with Geddes and Souter, all linked with the city of Perth. But I think one of the strongest elements of its bid is its community arts scene. Organisations um, like Ad Lib, which is a drama school that encourages people of all ages to participate in the arts and music. I've seen their work firsthand and I know how good it is. And that's just one example of the, the many examples that exist within the city. Um, I think, therefore, it would be a fitting winner um, of, the, of the competition. But I think it's also, from what Claire Baker referred to earlier on, it's what it could do for the city as well, rather than not just what um, Perth could do for the whole process, but what the process could do uh, for Perth. I mean, despite the facade within Perth, there are some pockets of poverty, and I think there's an opportunity to lift that up using the opportunity that's, cr that's created from this process and the investment that would come with it to lift up the opportunities for many hundreds of people within Perth and the wider area who could do with a helping hand. So I think the combination of the facilities within Perth, the great community spirit, the arts community, but also the potential for what it could do for Perth and the wider area, I think that makes it um, a winning contender for this competition. Thank you very much. Many thanks. I now call George Adam to be followed by Murdo Fraser. Thank you, President Officer. And can I thank Liz Smith for bringing this debate to the Parliament? 
Some of you may not be aware that I worked in the fair city of Perth for a number of years, so I'm only too aware of its thriving arts, cultural and entertainment scene. There's much to commend Perth's uh, bid for UK City of Culture 2021, but in this week of all weeks, can I paraphrase the Star Wars saga by saying there is another and that town is the town of Paisley, which on November the 13th this year they launched their bid in Paisley uh, Historic Abbey. And Perth may be the heart of Scotland, but the great town of Paisley is the centre of the known universe, and the buddies have their eye on the prize. It's quite interesting, uh, presiding officer, that Willie Rennie seems to have forgotten his university years that he spent in the great town of Paisley. Uh, he may not find himself a pint at the student union when he goes back to any alumni events at UWS. But both bids have many similarities. When you look at Liz's, uh, Liz Smith's uh, motion, you can see the redevelopment and the regeneration is a major part of it. And the one in Paisley is the same with the museum and various venues as well. Uh, but uh, the rede redevelopment and regeneration for me is the most important part of any bid, regardless of what, because it's, it's what actually comes out of it, what is there, the legacy as we move forward. And I would say that that's the most important part, creating the type of capital investment to ensure that we have the capacity to have this type of event. And I'm only too aware of Perth's Concert Hall because I've been there in various uh, party conferences, not recently because membership's got a wee bit too large now, but we all miss going to Perth for that. But Paisley currently has many venues as well, with Paisley Town Hall and the Abbey being used as an arts venue now, just now as well. And uh, that creates the whole history and legacy and the importance that what Paisley has given uh, Scotland in general. And we have the Arts Centre, but the, we lack one a major capital investment, which is a cinema performance area. And Paisley Community Trust plans to create a £40 million cinema and performing uh, arts uh, centre in the heart of Paisley, a 500-seat uh, main theatre with uh, five cinema screens, cafe, bar and restaurant. And this is all on the back of working with the bid as well. And they're using the Glasgow Film Theatre type model to do that. Recently, they had the screen machine, which normally goes around rural areas in Paisley County. County Square yesterday and uh, they showed It's a Wonderful Life. I didn't go to see it, presiding officer, because Stacey and I tend to leave that for a wee greet on uh, Christmas Eve. But uh, it was good to see kids and everybody back in the heart of the town instead of some out of town uh, cinema in a shopping centre. But as we've all said, any bid needs to ensure that they have the public backing. It has to be owned by the people in the said town. And our local newspaper, the Paisley Daily Express, has urged all buddies to back the bid by doing a social media campaign and hashtag why I love Paisley. Now, we all know I tend to just come here to do that, but uh, I've been taken to social media to do that as well now. But what's not to love about Paisley and its history in the bid? What's not to love about the people, their passion for life, and what we've given the world, both in historical context and in cultural one? from David Tennant to Gerard Butler, from Jerry Rafferty to John Byrne, uh, from the Weaver poet Robert Tannehill to the Reverend John Witherspoon, who signed the Declaration of Independence in America, and, of course, the world-famous Paisley pattern. All these things will be part of the bid that Paisley is pushing forward. But regardless of who is successful in, the, uh, in 2017 for the 2021 UK City of Culture, the most important thing, I believe, is regeneration. Looking at previous bids, I think this was the case for both Derry and for Hull. It was what could actually show for the future. Uh, so, presiding officer, Scotland moves forward with two of its great towns, both bidding for this uh, UK City of Culture. Can I just take this opportunity to wish Perth all the success in its journey during the bidding process? And for me, the best option will always be the great town of Paisley. So I say, just in closing, Watch this space, presiding officer, because as Benjamin has really said, keep your eye on Paisley. Thank you, Mr. Adam. I'm glad we did briefly return to Perth at the end. I now call Murdo Fraser. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Perhaps I can bring the debate back from uh, George Adams' galaxy far, far away uh, in Paisley to, to Perth and congratulate uh, Liz Smith for securing this debate uh, and thank her for the opportunity to contribute. It's just three years uh, since Perth was awarded city status as part of the Queen's Golden Jubilee celebrations. And I think the city is well placed now to be uh, the UK City of Culture 2021. 
I remember the long-fought campaign for city status in Perth, which was fought with cross-party backing. It's good to see that the current campaign also has cross-party support. And to have politicians from all sides unite in support of uh, this, this bid as UK City of Culture is going to be hugely important in taking it forward. Despite being Scotland's newest city, Perth is actually one of the country's oldest. And the birth of our nation and Perth's story are closely wrapped together. In a tale so gruesome it could feature in an episode of Game of Thrones, Kenneth McAlpin slaughtered his Pictish rivals at the dinner table in Schoon and therefore became the first King of Scots. And for the next 800 years, Schoon Palace served as the coronation location for all of Scotland's monarchs. It's Perth's interesting and sometimes bloody history is well represented throughout the city, thanks to museums and other cultural hotspots. And as we've heard, one particular attraction that traces Perth's history through the ages is the museum and art gallery. From the Romans to Scottish art, including a recent acquisition of an Alice and Watt piece, Perth Museum has all bases covered and is also facing the exciting prospect of a new redevelopment. And this is also true of the Black Watch Museum near the city centre, which recently underwent a massive restoration programme. And in terms of culture, Perth is, of course, the birthplace of John Buchan, one of Scotland's greatest writers, and, uh, of course, famous, amongst other things, for his biography of the first Marquis of Montrose. Still, I believe, a popular subject for biographers, especially those with a Perth connection. History is everywhere in Perth. Richard III, we know, was famously dug up from underneath a car park in Leicester. But there are many historians who believe that Perth also has a dead monarch lying underneath the streets. Following his murder in Perth, historians have long argued that James I lies buried under the streets of Perth. Now, perhaps I wouldn't advocate digging up the streets to search for him, although some people have proposed just that. But shovels are going to hit the ground near the city centre as part of a major leisure and arts redevelopment. Uh, as Liz Smith mentioned, the Mill Street car park is set for a major private sector investment with a regeneration project likely to bring a leisure complex complete with cinema, gym, restaurants and shops. Encouraging private sector investment like this to get involved is going to be incredibly important. But despite all these future plans and existing attractions, in many ways, Perth is Scotland's forgotten city. As other areas of the country have been handed generous support and investment, Perth, for the most part, has been left to its own devices. And people in Perth have looked on with some envy as Dundee has received substantial public investment by way of the V&A Museum and the waterfront development. So I think Perth needs similar support, and attaining UK City of Culture status would be the perfect springboard to attract more investors. And finally, digital infrastructure must also improve if Perth is to be a serious contender. A modern city is online and interconnected. Google Maps, TripAdvisor and Yelp are today's guidebooks, and Perth must be able to deliver these to visitors on demand and on the move. But sadly, too much of Perth continues to lag behind with broadband and internet speed falling way behind what is expected in the 21st century, and this needs to be improved. Presiding officer, contributions across the chamber today have demonstrated that Perth has the attractions to make it the perfect UK city of culture. History, culture and art ooze from every corner. As Liz Smith mentioned, London Derry Derry in Northern Ireland has benefited tremendously from City of Culture status and forecasters have predicted around £60 million could be generated within the local economy from a successful Perth bid. There are many challenges to overcome before this becomes a reality, but I look forward to working with colleagues across the Chamber to further Perth's case to be named as the next UK City of Culture. Thank you. Many thanks. And can I now invite Fiona Hislop to respond to the debate. Cabinet Secretary, seven minutes or so, please. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank members for their contributions. And as Murdo Fraser has pointed out, Perth does have cross-party support. Local authorities have a crucial role to play in delivering cultural activity. And I welcome Perth and Kinross's clear ambitions to use culture and creativity as a catalyst to promote regeneration. I am mindful, uh, as George Adam has pointed out, that there are other Scottish cities and areas who have indicated, or may still indicate, given this process is in its early days, a desire to bid to become 2021 UK City of Culture. Indeed, I recently met Renfrewshire Council to hear of their ambitions around Paisley. 
There is a strong case for Scotland in this competition, and our cities are in a strong place culturally. So let any competition be constructive um, to advertise our cultural successes and potential collectively uh, in this country. Uh, Claire Baker um, may be interested to know that the Scottish Government and our agencies, including Creative Scotland Events, Scotland and Scottish Enterprise, did provide significant support for shortlisted Dundee's 2017 bid, which, although ultimately unsuccessful, helped Dundee to put forward a subsequent successful bid to become a designated UNESCO City of Design, the first city in the UK to do so. The Scottish Government and our agencies therefore have recent valuable experience to help advise future bidding cities through this process. My officials have also been in contact with the Department of Culture, Media and Sport uh, in Westminster who run the competition to ensure details of the bidding process will be finalised to help Scottish cities and areas develop their plans. But let's focus on Perth. As Liz Smith set out, Perth is at the heart of Scotland's story of ancient Scotland and the Kingdom of Alba and the crowning place of Scottish kings. And, and Perth uh, also shaped modern Scotland, as Willie, uh, as Willie Rennie uh, referred to, uh, key figures from the 20th century Scottish Renaissance, the modernist and colourist painter John Duncan Ferguson, Patrick Geddes, uh, William Souter, all linked with Perth. And it has a vibrant cultural scene with the quality of the cultural organisations based in the area being of exceptional quality, from Horsecross Arts to Pitlochry Festival Theatre to the Perth Festival of the Arts and many more. We've heard about the importance, the central importance of the Ferguson Gallery and the extensive archives that they hold, exhibiting that great talent and creative energy. Um, the 1,200-seat uh, Perth Concert Hall is one of the most significant Scottish public buildings of this century and is renowned for its first-class acoustics. And I've been very pleased to attend Youth brand, Brass Band Championships there in previous years. And the City Plan for Perth sets uh, a new level of ambition for the city, improving connectivity, developing the knowledge economy and strengthening the business and tourism uh, offer. And it's clear that culture is central to the future aspirations for Perth, as Claire Baker set out, both in terms of the economic benefits which culture can generate and its wider transformative power to improve quality of life and build a sense of identity and civic pride across uh, communities for this very new of our, our newest of our cities. The transformation of Perth uh, Theatre is underway to renew and enhance the existing Edwardian Theatre in the centre of Perth. The transformation of this much-loved building into the most modern and exhilarating theatre space in Scotland, in the heart of Scotland's new city, will perfectly complement the international standard Perth Concert Hall. And within the theatre, Horsecroft Arts, uh, uh, Horsecross Arts will increase and diversify audiences through inspiring programmes, collaboration and the nurturing of new talent. And a paved civic space is to be created adjacent to the new theatre development and the venues linking Mill Street and the High Street are to be given significant improvements. And within the Perth City Plan, Mill Street and the surrounding area is identified as a cultural quarter. And next year, as part of the Town Centre planning pilots, the Scottish Government is supporting the Council to develop an innovative lighting project uh, designed to help tell the story of Perth and attract visitors into the Town Centre. This will be launched uh, in 2016, the Year of Innovation, Architecture and Design, which will spotlight, celebrate and promote Scotland's heritage and modern attributes in relation to architecture, engineering, renewables, fashion, textiles, science, technology and more through an exciting programme of activity to inspire the people of Scotland and our visitors and to boost tourism uh, in every corner of Scotland. Uh, Creative Scotland has invested over £3.29 million in individuals and organisations based in Perth and Kinross through 15 awards in 2014-15, including one of the highlights in Scotland's cultural calendar, Perth Festival of the Arts, who celebrated uh, the 44th uh, year in May this year. Highlights including the Proclaimers, Jules Holland and his Rhythm and Blues Orchestra, and La Boheme by English Touring Opera. Uh, something for everyone, and I'm sure that the 45th uh, festival next year will be some celebration. In recent years, all five of our national performing companies have performed in and engaged with communities across Perth and Kinross. Activities have ranged from offering practical ideas for music making for local nursery staff and teachers to taster sessions for all ages in modern ballet. The Royal Scottish National Orchestra inspired a 50-strong community orchestra to help Horse Cross Arts celebrate their 10th birthday this summer. And they also chose Perth to, uh, to present their inaugural Notes from Scotland initiative with five new works from young composers inspired by the National Trust of Scotland locations around the country. 
And the National Theatre of Scotland have also now announced the first part in a brand new cycle of three music pieces uh, commemorating the First World War, uh, the 306 Dawn, uh, written by Oliver Emanuel with music composed by Gareth Williams. This work will be co-produced with Perth Theatre and 1418 Now in association with Red Note Ensemble and will be directed by Laurie Sanson. The first part of this trilogy explores the stories of the 306 men shot for cowardice and desertion during the First World War. Dawn is set around the Battle of the Somme in July 1916 and will be ambitiously staged in the Perthshire countryside from May 2016. Our National Collections and Museums Gallery Scotland have extensive, extensive learning and community engagement programmes with a recent increase seen in visits to the National Museum of Scotland from schools in the Perth area. And there were only 10 in 13-14 and that's increased to 15 in 14-15. And Perth Museum and Art Gallery and the Black Watch Museum are one of ten partners in the Next of Kin touring programme commemorating the centenary of the First World War across Scotland. And each contributes their own stories based on local collections and have also developed a digital resource used by uh, schools and community groups. So from what we've heard from all contributions and what I've set out in terms of the current activity, Perth is on a journey. Um, earlier this year, President Officer, it was announced that Perth had beaten off competition from 19 other Scottish locations to land its own customised board to celebrate Monopoly's 80th anniversary. Skin Palace it was crowned as the Mayfair of Perth. It joined St Johnson's FC, the Perth Museum of Art Gallery, the Black Watch Museum, Perth College, the Ferguson Gallery, the Fair Maid's House and the Concert Hall on the board's 22 squares. The Courier uh, features on the spot normally occupied by Fleet Street, the traditional home of the newspaper industry, while Old Kent Road is taken over by the North Inch. So, presiding officer, in conclusion, Perth is going places, not just on the Monopoly board, and I wish the city well on its cultural journey. Many thanks, Cabinet Secretary. That concludes Liz Smith's debate, Perth bid to become the UK City of Culture 2021, and I now close this meeting of Parliament.